Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial. On this tutorial we are going to learn how to configure the Swagger UI to an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web API project. Swagger UI is a great tool which is used to visualize your API's endpoints. It really helps us as developers to visualize the APIs that we are consuming or other developers which want to consume our API without knowing the implementation. So let us first start by creating an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web API project. For that I'm going to use Visual Studio 2017, which currently is on the preview edition. To create a web API project, go to File, New, Project. We are going to use C Sharp, so on the C Sharp we select the .NET Core, then just write a name here, Swagger UI, and then OK. On the next window, make sure that you select the web API and from the drop down in here, ASP.NET Core 2.0. And then press the OK button. And we see that in our project, we have a controllers folder. And inside this controllers folder, we are going to see that we have a controller, values controller. And this controller has several endpoints. What you're going to do is that you're going to use Swagger UI to visualize these endpoints. For our Swagger UI to work, we need to install the Swash buckle. And the Swash buckle is used to add a Swagger to web API projects. To install Swash buckle, we could either go to Package Manager console and in here just write install package swashbuckle.aspnet core, or we could install it by going to Tools, Nugget Package Manager, and Manage Nugget Packages for Solution. In here, search for swashbuckle.aspnet core. It's the first one, so we want to install it to our Swagger UI project and then click install. So the installation was finished. What we need to do next is that we need to configure this Swagger to the middleware. And for that, go to your startup.cs class. And on the configure services method, we need to add the Swagger generator. So below the add MVC, just write services.add Swagger gen method. And inside the method, just add this code. The first parameter on the Swagger doc is going to be the version of our API. And then we have more info for this API, like the name, my API, and its version. So import this class, which belongs to swashbuckle.aspnetcore.swagger. Now what we need to do is that we need to enable the middleware for serving the generated JSON document and the Swagger UI. For that, go to the configure method in here and just write app.use swagger. This enables the usage of the swagger, so we can use the swagger. But except this one, we need to enable the generated JSON document and the swagger UI. So for that, just write in here app.use swagger UI. And inside this method, we need to configure the endpoint for our JSON file. I'm just going to write in here that the endpoint is going to be swagger slash version one swagger.json file. And the second parameter, is just a description. Now just run your application. So the application runs successfully. Now, if you want to see the generated document describing the endpoints, you need to go to swagger slash v1 slash swagger.json. So here we are going to see the results of our JSON file. And if you want to see the UI, then simply remove this part and go to slash swagger. And here we see all the endpoints that come from our controller. So we see the API slash values, which is a get. Then we have a post, a delete, get, and a put. So if you go back to your values controller, you're going to see that we have API values. Here we see that we have a get and another one which has a parameter, which is a type of ID. And you're going to see that one on our Swagger UI as well. So we have a get, which is API values and another one with an ID parameter. So let's put a breakpoint in here and go back to our Swagger UI. We put the breakpoint on our API values slash ID. And in here just enter an ID one and try it out. So we see that we come to our breakpoint. If we continue, you're going to see all the results in here. So we have in here the request URL, the response body, which is the value, the response code, which is 200, and here you are going to see the response headers. The same way you could add another controller or you could add more methods to this controller 
And what you need to do is you need to simply refresh the browser and you're going to get all the endpoints on the Swagger UI. So guys, this is how you configure the Swagger UI to an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web API project. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to not miss the upcoming parts.